Hey everyone, so this video will be a brief introduction into graphing position, velocity, and acceleration graphs and the re relationship between them. For our first set of graphs, let's look at what they would look like if we had a constant position. This simply means that the object isn't moving anywhere and is stationary. So our position versus time graph would look like this. Since we aren't moving anywhere, our position doesn't change. Since our position doesn't change, our velocity is zero, and therefore our velocity versus time graph would look like this. And since we aren't changing our velocity at all, our acceleration is zero, and therefore our acceleration versus time graph would look like this. All right. You will notice when working with the graphs that the slope of one graph will be what is graphed on our next graph. So for example, with these graphs here, the slope of the position versus time graph is zero. So therefore, the points that are graphed in the next graph, the velocity versus time graph, are zero. And the same idea can be applied to the velocity versus time graph and the acceleration versus time graph. Since the slope of the velocity versus time graph is zero, zero is graphed in the acceleration versus time graph. All right. So for our next graph, we will look at constant velocity. If we were traveling at a constant velocity, our velocity would never change. And therefore, our velocity versus time graph would look like this. If we never change our velocity, our acceleration would be zero. And if we have a constant velocity, our position will increase at a constant rate, and that graph will look like that. Take note again that we can look at the slope of the position versus time graph, which is, the po which is a positive value. And this slope is equal to the value that is graphed in our velocity versus time graph. And the same thing goes for the slope of the velocity versus time graph, which is zero. And therefore, the zero is graphed on the acceleration versus time graph. All right. So the next graph we will look, like, look at is the constant acceleration graph, which tells us that the acceleration is constant and therefore it doesn't change. All right. So this is a non-zero acceleration, though. So our acceleration versus time graph will look like this. All right, since we have a constant acceleration, that means that our velocity is, a con is constantly increasing. So it's gonna look like this. So our velocity time graph will convey this with a straight, steadily increasing sloped line. And if we are increasing our velocity, at the beginning of this time frame, we won't really cover much distance at all because we have a very small velocity. So our position versus time graph has a small slope at the beginning. After time, the object um, will be traveling faster, right, because it has a larger velocity towards the end of the graph. And this means that it will cover more distance and more time. So the position versus time graph looks like this towards the end of the time frame. The idea about talking about slope also explains this parabolic shape for the position versus time graph. We know that the slope of the position versus time graph at a particular point is the value that is graphed for the velocity versus time graph at that same time. At the beginning of the graph, the position versus time graph has a small slope, so therefore it has a small velocity. And towards the end of the position versus time graph, it has a bigger slope and therefore a bigger velocity. The slope of the velocity versus time graph is a constant positive number, so the acceleration versus time graph has a positive non-zero number. Next, we're going to do two quick examples. The first is of a ball that is tossed up in the air. The ball rises up into the air, pauses for a very short moment of time at the top, and then begins to fall back down to the ground. At the peak of the ball's travel, it pauses and then begins to travel back down the opposite direction. So our position versus time graph is gonna look like this. We're gonna draw a vertical line here just to signal that at this point, something different is happening. Our velocity versus time graph is gonna be a little bit more tricky. So let's look at that velocity versus time graph. We know that when we throw the ball upwards, it starts out with a higher velocity and then begins to slow down until it reaches its peak, at which point the velocity is zero. We also know that whenever we have a parabolic shape for our position versus time graph, we're going to have a sloped line for our velocity versus time graph. So once the ball starts falling back down, it will begin picking up speed as it falls. So our velocity versus time graph will look like this one on the other side. Also take note that the velocity is negative. This is because the ball is falling down, which is in the negative direction. So as we've discussed before in class, any object that is traveling through the air is accelerating at the rate of gravity, which is negative. So we would graph negative 10 on our acceleration versus time graph. All right. So the second example that we're gonna go over is an object that quickly increases in velocity like this. 
So we will say that the object is traveling at a small velocity and then almost instantaneously is traveling at a larger velocity. So our velocity versus time graph has a sudden jump like this. We're gonna draw that vertical line in again um, through all of our graphs because this is where there's a change in the motion at this point. So we know that the other graphs will also have changes at this point. When the velocities are constant, we know that the acceleration versus time graphs will be zero. But there is something when the velocities suddenly change. We know that the object sped up because its velocity increased and it's in the positive direction. That means that the signs of the velocity and acceleration must be the same. And since our velocity is positive, we will have this small spike in our acceleration versus time graph in the positive direction to represent this change in velocity. For a position versus time graph, we know that since we have a constant velocity, we're gonna have a sloped line. The larger velo the velocity, the more sloped the line will be. So, because you're gonna travel more distance in less time. So at the beginning, we're gonna have a gently sloped line for the first portion of the graph. And once we pick up speed and we're going faster, we're going to have a steeper slope line for the second portion.